So the feedback on all my videos looking at the past of Smite is always super positive, being either a trip down memory lane for some people, or an interesting insight into how Smite was before you started playing for others. So today we're going to look back at the not so distant past with starter items. So for those unaware, starter items were replaced by blessings in early 2018 with the start of season 5. They filled a similar role, being items that you bought to boost your early game and sold later on, but functioned a bit differently. Some starter items were basically remade as blessings, but others were sadly cut from the game entirely when the blessing system was introduced. Comment down below blessings or starters and why you prefer the ones you do. Alright, so let's start it off on the physical side of things with two of my favourite starter items from back in the day, Death Toll and Bluestone Pendant. So Death Toll was a basic attack focused item that came with 10 physical power and 100 health for 800 gold, which by the way, all starter items were 800 gold. The passive of the item was basically the predecessor to Berserker's Shield that we now see in Smite. You will be healed for 8 health and 4 mana per basic attack you hit on a target, with AoE hits only granting half the benefit beyond the first target as it does with Berserker Shield. This was a flat value unlike Berserker Shield, so it was more effective early on in the game and less effective later, and was used mostly on solo lane auto attack warriors like Bologna, Osiris or Erlang Shen, and also Hunters for sustain in the duo lane. It was also interestingly used on some junglers because of the way Bumba's Mask, the jungle item, worked back then, but more on masks later on. As for its ability based counterpart, Bluestone Pendant, this came with 15 physical power, 50 mana and 5 mp5, and the passive gave you an additional 30 damage on ability hits over 2 seconds. This was the go to starter item for most ability based warriors like Tia or Hercules at the time, and was also seen a lot on ability based hunters, and sometimes in jungle as well similar to Death Toll. The passive effect on this was reintroduced as the crusher's passive later on as well. So this was a super fun item to play with in my opinion. It came with offensive stats and bonus damage that really promoted aggressive play. Take solo lane for example, the current meta is Warrior's Blessing which just gives a crap load of defense and sustain, making the fights really long and grueling in solo. But in the Bluestone Pendant meta, you had no defense early on and you were basically doing bonus ability damage, so fights were decided much quicker in this era if you had like a Bluestone versus a Bluestone Warrior in solo. It was also a really interesting dynamic of Bluestone Warriors versus Death Toll Warriors back in the day in solo, which was a really interesting sort of thing to theorycraft around. And anyone who played with this item will tell you how satisfying it was to watch your Bluestone ticks secure a kill you wouldn't otherwise have gotten. That was one of the best feelings in Smite back in the day. Alright, let's switch gears a bit here and cover the magical starter items, of which there were three main ones, Soulstone, Vampiric Shroud and Sands of Time. So I'll cover Sands of Time first as it basically still exists in the form of Mage's Blessing now. Sands gave 20 magical power, 10% CDR, 5 MP5 at base and then 2 more MP5 per 10% of your missing mana, so up to 20 MP5 from the passive. This was generally your go to on mages that wanted high sustainability in the early game and all that used a lot of mana. As I said, this is very similar to Mage's Blessing but of course didn't require that upgrade quest that the Blessings have, as it just gave a lot of mana sustain and also that CDR that Mage's Blessing gives as well. So moving on, Vampiric Shroud was a weird one. It was one of the longest standing starter items in the game and had been around for over 5 years by the time it was removed, where Soulstone and Sands of Time were slightly newer additions. So Vamp Shroud came with some health, magical power and physical protection just some useful base stats, and then the passive was a heal and mana restoration that procced when you dealt damage with an ability for every target you hit. So this would proc 6 times if you hit a full wave with the ability. Towards the end of its life this item was seen quite a bit less than other options like Soulstone or Sands of Time, but it deserves recognition for how long it was in the game while remaining basically unchanged. This was also often used on aggressive solo lane guardians like Artio, along with its obvious use on some mages as well. And the final magical starter item, Soulstone, was a much more aggressive option. It came with 100 mana and 20 magical power, then the passive was almost that of a mini modern day Heartseeker but for magicals. You basically had to stack the item up 5 times using basic attacks, then your next damaging ability and any others used within 3 seconds of it would have 40 bonus magical power and restore some mana as well. This was often the go-to for aggressive mages and basic attack mages like Kronos or Sol that could easily stack it up. It provided less sustain than the other two options in Sands of Time and Vampiric Shroud, but it offered a hell of a lot more damage. I think these three mage starter items here really shows one of the big advantages starter items had on Blessings the variety. You could pick from these three depending on what you needed, and if you wanted more health sustain and defenses, you can get Vampiric Shroud. If you want tons of mana sustain, get Sands of Time. 
more aggressive early game damage, get Soulstone. Whereas nowadays, the only starter item you can really get on mid lane as a mage is Mage's Blessing, unless you're Kronos, Sol, or Freya and the like that can use Hunter's Blessing well. Having this variety back then made it so you actually had to check your opponent's starting build and play differently based on what they had. Like, you had to be careful of getting bursted if they were rocking a Soulstone, or you're probably not going to be able to outvalue them in terms of mana if they were rocking a Sands of Time, things like that. Of course, Blessings do have their own unique advantages over starter items, but for me, the variety made starter items so much better. So I'll just quickly cover Mark of the Vanguard and Watcher's Gift, as they're basically the equivalents of Warrior's and Guardian's Blessing respectively. So Vanguard was basically Warrior's Blessing, but without the stacking and heal on hit mechanic. It simply provided health, defences, and 4 damage reduction from all sources, making it your go-to if you wanted to be uber tanky in solo and face tank minions all day long. Watcher's Gift was also very similar to Guardian's Blessing, giving bonus gold, HP, and mana restoration when assisting minion and camp kills. However, of course, it didn't have the upgrade quest to gain that gold per 5 seconds, and it was more front-loaded on this item, giving 12 health, 10 mana, and 5 bonus gold per minion assist, in comparison to Guardian's Blessing now, only offering 7 health, 7 mana, and 3 bonus gold. But then, of course, Guardian's Blessing does give you that bonus 4 gold per 5 seconds upon evolving, which Watcher's Gift obviously didn't have. Also, quickly mention War Flag. Though it was extremely unpopular and almost never saw play, it was aimed at physical supports that wanted to be more aggressive as an alternative to Watcher's Gift. It may have actually fit pretty well into today's meta with all the assassin supports that are running around nowadays. It came with 10 physical power, 100 health, and 5 MP5 at base. Then the passive granted 5 health and mana restoration plus 1% movement speed and attack speed per assisted minion to all allies within 55 units, not just to you. 55 units is the range of a ranged basic attack for reference, so a pretty big area. The attack speed and movement speed stacked up to 10 times for 10% of each. Seems pretty powerful, but in general it was overshadowed by Watcher's Gift, plus it wasn't even buildable on Guardians because of the physical power it gave, so it was limited to only a small pool of supports at the time, which was mostly Warriors. As I said though, it would be interesting to see this effect in today's meta and how it would fare on Fenrir and Najah support. Okay, so I'm adding this in after recording because I just remembered another starter item that was in the game around Season 4, being Swift Wing. This came with 100 health, 10 HP 5 and 5% movement speed, and then provided basically Talaria boots and Traveler shoes current passive effect giving you a big boost of movement speed after you left the fountain. I guess you could also call this a mini pyromancer effect too. It wasn't used all that much from what I remember though, since it was 800 gold and competed with other starter items that offered much more in terms of actually fighting. Alright, so that's all the basic starter items covered, but we also had masks back in this era, and not the masks you know today, they were very different. So first I'll cover Bumba's Mask, which was the old jungle item that was replaced by Assassin's Blessing. They did very similar things, but did have a few differences. So Bumba's came with some base health and mana, nothing to go crazy about, but it is more than what you get at the base on Assassin's Blessing. And then it did have a similar effect to the Assassin's Blessing nowadays, but it did bonus ability damage to camps only, and your auto attacks instead just did 15 true damage bonus. It then restored 20 mana, and then 10% of the monster's max health when you killed it, so very similar to Assassin's Blessing, but without the upgrade quest of course. So this item started out as a typical 800 gold item that was all you could really get in jungle, but as I mentioned earlier with Bluestone Pendant, this item was lowered in cost to 500 gold, allowing you to buy Boombas and also a real starter item like Bluestone or Soulstone or something like that. This was a really big difference that set it apart from the modern day Assassin's Blessing, since you could still have a variety in jungle starting builds depending on what you picked as your secondary starter item alongside your Boombas Mask. There was also a period in time in Smite where a lot of people were buying Boombas Mask, like you had mid laners and sometimes supports, even sometimes solo owners buying Bumba's mask as well. This was mainly because it didn't have a limit to how many people could get the Bumba's benefits back then, so you would have like junglers and mid laners both getting Bumba's benefits, but it was eventually nursed so that only the closest person got Bumba's benefits, at which point it was kind of like phased out on mid laners and things like that. Okay, so there were two more masks, which you probably guessed were Lono's and Rangda's mask. Same ones we have in the game now, but they were of course very different in terms of what they actually did back in Season 4. So Lono's mask was very similar to Bumba's, but for supports. It was an item you bought in addition to your starter item, which was usually Watcher's Gift, and it was actually similar to the questing mechanic we have on Blessings nowadays. So it came with 5 HP 5 at base, and then you gained a stack every time you assisted a minion or jungle monster up to 75 stacks, giving 2 max health per stack for a total of 150 max health. So yeah, the actual stacks on the item really sucked, even for 500 gold, but the thing that made this item worth it sometimes was that it gave you 400 gold in a lump sum once you got it to 75 stacks. So at that point, you really only paid 100 gold for the item, and you 
could sell it later on for 330 gold back, which effectively netted you 230 gold just for buying and stacking up the item if you were willing to put in the effort and the initial cost to buy it at the start of the game. It was essentially a way of keeping supports up in gold compared to other roles at the time. And the final mask, Rangda's mask, was definitely the meme mask of the three and it sort of still is today. So Rangda's was basically a 500 gold item that if you didn't snowball in the first 5 minutes it was probably a complete waste of 500 gold. So it came with 5 MP5 for your 500 gold, but then it stacked up from kills or assists up to 10 stacks, 2 for a kill and 1 for an assist, giving 1% movement speed and 1% CDR each stack up to 10% total. Then at 10 stacks the item evolved to gain 15 penetration as well. So yeah, as you can see, if you don't manage to get a lot of stacks early on then this is a complete waste of 500 gold. If you can manage to go 5-0 in the first 5 minutes and get it up to 10 stacks, you can basically 1v5 because you got 10% speed, 10% CDR and 15 pen for 500 gold, which is ridiculous. I believe there were also a few other versions of this item, such as one that required 16 total stacks, but I couldn't find exact numbers on the older versions. This was basically how it was at the end of Season 4 when it was removed. Alright, so that's all the starter items and starter masks that were removed at the start of Season 5 to be replaced by Blessings and the full item masks that we have today. If you did enjoy this look back at Smite's history, then be sure to drop a like before you leave and subscribe if you want to see more of this type of content but that's about it have a great day and peace out nerds